The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. As China moves to crack down on crypto, particularly trading with centralized exchanges, decentralized finance is seeing a rise. Is DeFi the future of crypto? Joining us now to discuss is David Pakman, managing partner at CoinFund. Hey there, David. So congratulations first off before we get into investment uh, on your new role at CoinFund. You're starting this position after 13 years at Venrock. So first off, what made you decide to leave Venrock after over a decade there? Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, I did uh, focus on early stage tech venture investing at Venrock for about 13 years uh, in a bunch of different sectors, consumer services and consumer products and ad tech and robotics and, and crypto. And over the last five years, my investments were focused even more on crypto. About 90% of my time over the last several years had been really focused on crypto. To me, it seems to be the largest and most interesting uh, opportunity for long-term venture investment, for wealth creation, and for disruption. Uh, and I uh, wanted to spend all my time focused on it. And so I joined uh, a firm that we had a partnership with for the last five years uh, that I was uh, helpful in, in uh, helping get to the stage they're in now. I joined CoinFund so I could focus 100% of my time on sort of multi-stage uh, crypto venture. So what top investments in the space do you see right now? Um, with this China ban, do you see a rise in DeFi platforms or do you, are you more into NFTs? I had a check on your Twitter. I saw you had started tweeting about NFTs. What's your investment thesis? Well, first, uh, venture investors are long-term investors. By the nature of the asset class, you know, we, we invest, particularly starting from the early phase, uh, in companies or projects that are going to reach fruition in sort of five to 10 year time frame. So what we're not doing is chasing sort of the most current trend. We're trying to invest in and predict the subsequent trends, the ones that are going to be bigger later. So NFTs are one area that you mentioned. Uh, I led the Series A round of Dapper Labs uh, back in 2018 before most people were aware of NFTs. Those of us in crypto land knew about CryptoKitties and and knew about the uh, origin of the NFT standard by Dapper. But that now has obviously become something that's tipping into the mainstream with both Dapper's activity around uh, Top Shot and also just the, the great NFT sort of profile picture art craze. Um, so that NFTs and, and where they go from here is still very interesting to us. We're looking at the intersection of NFT and DeFi. We believe NFTs will be fractionalized and you will, you will borrow against them. And so many of the activities that we do today in crypto DeFi will be an NF, sort of intersect with NFTs. Um, we're super excited about building, uh, investing in the infrastructure for building Web3 decentralized applications, still pretty immature area. Um, I noticed in the in your, the web page you were scrolling on, we have an investment in Threebox, for instance, which is the creator of the ceramic protocol, a decentralized identity and user data, or sovereign data store. We think that's a key element of the uh, Web3 stack. Um, so th those are two areas that we're spending a bunch of time in now. Are there any DeFi projects in particular that we should be paying more attention to that maybe have slipped under the radar? Um, I, I think actually you guys have done a great job of covering DeFi. And um, I think most of the sort of pure play, I think what, what we're most interested in is in DeFi is sort of the, 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 the pure play protocols um, that are the sort of recipes for what everything else on top gets created. You know, the compounds and balancers um, and the Aves uh, and the Uniswaps, these sort of uh, key components that due to their composability will allow other type of DeFi derivatives and synthetics to be built on top. So we've been sort of pure, if you will, in, uh, in looking at the building blocks and recipes uh, for DeFi. I think we're looking at the same thing, though, for NFTs also, right? Like, what are the, the key protocols um, or recipes that will be necessary to enable uh, NFT DeFi? One example is, you know, how do you price an NFT that hasn't traded for a long time? So price discovery um, and what are the uh, mechanisms for creating fractional ownership of NFTs? Today, we see DAOs um, really serving this purpose of fractionalizing ownership of of NFTs because they've gotten expensive. It's hard for an individual to buy. So people are coming together in DAOs, but, but there'll be protocols to do that like fractional and, and others. So we spent a lot of time there.
Does regulation factor into your investment now that we see U.S. regulators and Congress looking into crypto and China as well doing a crackdown on trading platforms? How does that factor into your, your investments? I guess uh, because we're largely long-term investors, we're sort of trying to play out what happens over a number of years rather than guess how, let's say, price is affected um, over the latest regulatory announcement of the week. And I'd say the long-term view that I hold about, let's talk just about U.S. regulation first, is that I think there's, there's a, well, there's a non-zero chance that the U.S. takes a dramatically wrong turn and um, really harms, it creates regulatory frameworks that harm significantly uh, crypto development in the U.S. Now, in that scenario, I think crypto is unlikely to be uh, long-term stifled and, and it, things will migrate away from the United States. But, but I don't think that's a high probability. I think it's a very low probability. What's more likely is that we'll have some, somewhere between rational and challenging regulation in the U.S. about um, crypto broadly. And, um, and, and the hope is that the industry does a, as good a job as it's been doing in the last few weeks of really trying to shape the decisions that policy, policymakers will make to allow for a lot of innovation, but also solve for um, tax reporting and KYC, AML, and, and the other things that, that municipal, municipalities should be interested in. So I guess my bet is that in the US, we get much more regulation than we have now. We really don't have any, just the threats of it. And I'm hopeful that it's a little bit more sensible than what sort of some of the public statements and proclamations have been. That is, for instance, like maybe we work to modify the definition of a security uh, so that it's not wedded in something that was you know, described in 1933. And, and just in the case of China, would you just stay clear of investments there? So my, my view on China is um, I'm not a China expert, and I, I've gained a lot of this point of view by, by watching your show and listening to experts. And, but, but I think my view is that it, it feels inevitable that, um, that China will treat crypto and, and Bitcoin, of course, specifically, but crypto more broadly in the way that it's treated the internet. There will be a great firewall. Um, they want to control the protocols or cryptocurrencies that are permitted to be used in, on the mainland uh, and by their citizens. And uh, for that reason, only um, most of the large projects will end up not being able to be adopted by large swaths or, or maybe all of China. That's very similar to the way a lot of Western internet properties expanded, right? That Google is effectively a, a you know, market cap minus the um, you know, participation in China. Someone like Apple figured out how to thread the needle and is able to get revenues from China. So I think we'll, we'll look at crypto the same way. Will some projects uh, be able to be deployed in China? Yeah, and will most not? Yeah. Uh, and so you sort of do the math on the global market cap as a result of that. But it, but it doesn't mean the end of any project. Mm -hmm.